Today we're going to be talking about the Thames & Cosmos C1000 Chemistry Kit. This kit advertises 125 different experiments for ages 10 and up and has received the Parents' Choice Gold Award. Now is it me or is the drawing on that award a little bit creepy? During the video, while discussing the kits, my kids and I will perform four of the experiments to give you an idea of what this kit is all about. So to start off, let's take a look at what comes inside the box. You can see a fairly comprehensive list of included items on the back of the box, but it's nice to know that obviously in addition to coming with chemicals, you'll have all the additional chemistry hardware you're going to need including cylinders, pipettes, beakers, and much more. Little things like these safety goggles are included, which is a nice touch. Although they don't seem like the highest of quality, and there's only one pair, so siblings to the student or the parents are kind of out of luck. My kids and I just basically ended up using safety goggles that we already had. Essentially, other than some very common household items, beakers, cylinders, toppers, angled tubes, the kit comes with everything you're going to need. My kids and I are going to do some actual experiments in a second, but first let's talk about the best thing this kit has going for it right out of the box and that's the book that comes with it. At over 80 pages this is hands down the best Thames and Cosmos book that I've ever reviewed. And I've reviewed a lot of Thames and Cosmos kits over the years on this channel. The pages are vibrant, the instructions are easy to read, but more importantly there is ample supplemental reading material in the book that sometimes talks about the history of the chemistry experiment or how it's used in modern day. I can't stress how important that is from the point of view of a former science teacher. For example, one of the experiments in the book is you're going to make a chemical that is still used as a modern day dye in the printing industry. In case you get that ever popular question from one of your kids like, why do I need to know this now or how do we use this in today's world? They have plenty of examples in the book that go along with it. Additionally, it comes with different questions on almost every page that will allow you to further engage your student as you're doing the experiment. Of course, there's an answer key in the back and that's always a party bonus. Perhaps the reason this booklet is so good is because it is version 2.0. Apparently 1.0 maybe wasn't that great. My only gripe about this book is it doesn't include the periodic table. I mean, it's a chemistry book, and not including the periodic table is like writing a summary of the Bible and not mentioning Jesus. Maybe for version 3, put a periodic table in it. I realize that's a pretty petty gripe. Overall, this is a fantastic book that comes with the kit, and I was really happy with it. And while I thought the booklet was the best thing, my kids, of course, thought the experiments were... Whoa, purple! So let's talk about those. These experiments are actually fairly advanced. You're not just going to be mixing baking soda and vinegar and watching the volcano explode, or dropping Mentos in a Diet Coke bottle and seeing how fast you can run away from it. That being said, if you want to see how many Mentos it takes to produce the higher geyser from a Diet Coke bottle, be sure and check out that video we did a couple of years ago because we figured it out. Getting back to the kit, in this experiment that I'm going to show you, my kids and I are using some aluminum foil and a couple of the compounds that come with the kit and actually making hydrogen gas. Now, if your great grandmother just so happened to be on the Hindenburg, then you know hydrogen gas is pretty flammable. Which after doing the experiment is something we were able to recreate in our dining room. Other experiments we performed were the classic acid-base reactions using a litmus solution and watching the color changes as different acids and bases were added. We did experiments using heavy metals and the different properties of the elements depending on the compound it is in. We also did an electrolysis of water experiment where you break down the water molecules into their individual oxygen and hydrogen atoms. While doing this experiment, your kids are actually going to be able to visualize the oxygen and hydrogen gases being formed by the breakdown of the water molecules. So the three things it has going forward, of course, is the excellent booklet, the really creative and fun science experiments that you're going to be able to do with the kit, and plus the kit itself which includes an experiment tray which is organized and comprehensive without the need to buy extra stuff like beakers and other chemistry equipment. But of course nothing is perfect, so let's take a moment and talk about the negatives. One drawback is these kits take way more setup time than your average physics kit. A physics kit you can just open up, start putting things together, start building things, and it's going to work just fine. In some of these experiments, the first step is actually making a solution and letting it sit overnight so you can continue on with the experiment. It takes quite a bit of pre-planning. In fact, here I am making the solution the night before so we could do the experiment the following day. Also, unlike a physics kit that just allows you to put everything in a bag and store it for a later day when you're done with it, chemistry kits require that you do them in an area that you don't care if it gets dirty, and also there's a lot of cleanup time afterwards. You're going to be cleaning up all the glassware, disposing of all your chemicals, and you're going to want to do this in an area that you don't care if it gets a little bit dirty. But again, these negatives aren't specific to this chemistry kit. They apply to all the kits that I've reviewed, and I'm pretty sure every kit that's out there. I guess my only real gripe with the chemistry kit, and this is something Thames and Cosmos does with all of their kits when they advertise how many experiments that come in the kit. They advertise 125 experiments, but some of them are quite redundant. In fact, the very first experiment is just teaching your kids how to filter sand water. 
and you don't really need a science kit to do that. You can see in the table of contents there are 10 sections. I think better advertised instead of 125 different experiments would be to advertise 10 different chemistry topics because some of the experiments are quite repetitive and can be done within a few minutes. But if you break it down into topics and let's say you do one topic a week then 10 different topics this kit's going to last you about two and a half months and I think maybe that's a better way to look at it. My last complaint specific to this kit and this may be a little petty as well is when you open up the kit you see these huge vials of compounds but when you actually get to use them you realize that they're no nowhere near being full. It's like when you open up a big bag of Cheetos and realize the bag is only filled about a third of the way full. But I want some more Cheetos. It's the same thing. I kind of want more compounds. There's very little room to error. If you make a mistake, then you're quickly going to run out of your materials. Also, if you have other kids and maybe want to repeat these experiments a year or two down the road when they're a little bit older, these things aren't going to last. But again, that's just the nature of chemistry kids. But it would be nice if they put a little bit more in it. I mean, I guess I could give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's actually a U.S. Postal Service rule saying you can only mail a certain quantity of chemicals without having to pay some huge tax. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. As I've mentioned, I've used a lot of chemistry sets with our kids and have reviewed them on the channel. Much like this Yellowscope product that we reviewed about a year or two ago that I really liked, and I still do. But after reviewing this other kit, I would say the Yellowscope is most beneficial for late elementary, early middle school, and the C1000 kit by Thames and Cosmos is much better suited for your middle school and high school grade levels. All that to be said though, don't just take my word for it. Check out the description below. You'll see a link for it on Amazon where you can also read the over 500 reviews that other customers have put on it that have led to a four and a half out of five star rating. That being said, I hope this review helps you a lot. If it did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day and I'll see you next week.